Everyone's good. All right. Everyone's back. Sav's had a podcast yeah. off season. <laughs> I have, unfortunately. Well, actually, I do want to. Um, so every time we have Savvy on the podcast, we'll get a couple new YouTube viewers that haven't been there before. It's like, Ooh. why don't you ever introduce the girl? So everyone, this is Savvy <laughs> Simo s- sitting in the other chair. And on the blue couch, <laughs> our guest is Betsy Flint. Thanks for having me. We, uh, we've tried to make this happen for a while. Yes. I'm glad we could finally get to hang out. Schedules aligning. Yeah. I'm still in off season, I guess. I haven't started yeah. up. So you got a... Uh, Broke a little yeah, pinky toe. Injury. Yeah. <laughs> Chasing Cora. <laughs> Those are no joke. I was toe running injuries? pretty <laughs> fast. We were really getting after it and hit it on the wall. So oh, delaying so the preseason a little bit, which is unfortunate. Which, but Unfortunate, but given how long the year is, maybe yeah. delaying it isn't the worst thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It and could be a blessing in disguise. Julia's out for a little bit, yeah. and we plan to play together when she's back, so... I think we'll be playing late into the year, so it's not yeah. a terrible thing. Yeah. yeah. Nice to you, slow down. There's always a silver lining. Yeah. Always. Nice to be home with Cora and Chase and not traveling everywhere. So it's been great. Yeah. Is this, what's the longest stretch you've been at home? Because I feel like last year was a wild ride. <laughs> last year we had like two weeks and we were training again. It wasn't very much. It was like the holidays. Mm. The year before, I was still kind of postpartum and getting back into it. So I was still continuing to play, but maybe not as intense of a schedule. Um, and then I was pregnant. So probably not since COVID having like this much wow. time. Yeah. It's been nice. How's it been? Is it, uh, I think it's kind of funny when people come home after so long, you sort of have to reacquaint yourself with your husband or your spouse. And you're like, oh, this is, this is my bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. Uh, it is hard. Chase is now the primary parent with Cora which hurts my soul sometimes because <laughs> she prefers him over me and it's great in the middle of the night when mm-hmm. she doesn't want me, but it's really hard in the daytime and it's been nice to be home. Cause I do sometimes I'm primary now. So it kind of switches back and forth, Yeah, but it's been a challenge for sure. I feel leaving like, her for so long. I feel like that the primary parent will go back and forth, maybe not necessarily in terms of uh, time, but in terms of child preference, because right now Delaney is obviously Austin's primary parent because when he's hungry, he's not looking for dad. Yeah. <laughs> but I've seen it go back and forth with Try and Gabby, where Naya knows mom's going to give me this, dad's yeah. going to give me this. All right, now dad's primary. <laughs> I'm sure that's happening. Anytime she wants YouTube or screen time, she goes straight to Chase. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> uh, so, so it's been fun. Awesome. I think it's uh, one of my favorite things to talk to people about, especially new parents, but in specific new moms, is how becoming a mom changed them or didn't change them as an athlete. Because having... Kim DiCello on a couple years. So she was super competitive. And she was like, I thought as soon as I had Luca, that as soon as I could get back on the road, I'd be fired up and even more so because now I could provide for him. But then she's like, when I was away, I just wanted to come home. Mm. And I'm curious what it's been like for you, because obviously you've been a fantastic athlete your whole life. Um, And then you go into being mom. Has that changed your competitive outlook at all? A little. I was really worried about that when I got pregnant, if I was going to lose the competitive drive and um, just all the physicality. That was a big challenge of getting pregnant. But I still love competing. It is hard when we lose or as soon as we're done, I want to be home and I'll change my flight like this. So Mm -hmm. that's the hardest part. But I once I'm in the tournament, I'm like distracted by all the things by film, scout, practice, all of that. It's the downtime that's hard, like between tournaments when I'm not with her, but I still am super competitive and I don't know, I thrive on the court. I love, I feel like it's just a different side of me on the court than off the court. And it's kind of fun to have all that uh, fire on the court. I think that you are the, and I mean, this is a 100% compliment, one of the <laughs> best killers I've yes. watched on the court. Agree. Thank you. Where <laughs> I think if it's 21 20, if I want someone at the service line or playing defense, I'm picking Betsy Flint. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I I love pressure situations. I love end of matches, close matches. I love being fired up by my opponent. 
Yeah, all of that. Yeah, do not yeah. fire Betsy up because it's not going to go well for you. <laughs> <laughs> does not go well for the opponent. Can't, but, yeah. can't give my secrets away. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. you're just because you're all you always have good fire, and it doesn't it doesn't always come out as like anything cheering or verbal or anything like that. But you just like when you go back to serve, it's like oh boy, okay, here we go. Because your serve is obviously, I mean, based on all the awards you've gotten from it, is one of the best in the in the world. But um, it is so fun to compete against you. I feel like I always want to bring my best against you because if I don't, I'm screwed. Like <laughs> it's been fun learning from you in that way. Like trying to just coming out of college and being on a team, I've been like trying to find my identity on the court. Like, do I want to be super gnarly or do I want to be like the fun smiley? Cause I've played well, both I've played bad both ways. So, but it's cool seeing how you operate and taking, maybe taking some of that, uh, into my game because I'm still learning too, like yeah. what is best for me, what's best for you. It's and everyone's so different in the yeah. way that they yeah. play. Yeah. And it's taken time for me to figure that out too. I definitely play better in like an F U mentality yeah. and yeah. that's not me off the court. So I feel like I was <laughs> torn, like trying to find that mentality, but it's really helped me like play my best yeah. on the court. Yeah. So hundred percent. Yeah. How'd you end up discovering that, that that's kind of peak Betsy? Um, <laughs> I mean, I've worked a lot with John. He's into the mental game. I've worked with a lot of sports psychologists. John Mayer. John Mayer yeah. Sorry, John Mayer. Um, been just through a lot of conversations. That's kind of what I've concluded. I'm playing best when I'm <laughs> in that mentality. Yeah. Do you have to sort of psych yourself up into that mentality? Because there, Michael Jordan was sort of famous for inventing slights to get yeah. himself into that yeah. FU mentality. For sure. Yeah. There are times <laughs> where I kind of make some things up. Um, I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. But it, I mean, it's hard. You can't always get there right away and you got to find how to get there. I'm not perfect at it. Yeah. Um, but that's what I play my best at. I think that's one of the most fascinating parts of sport is that everyone plays and they get to their peak playing by a different way. Like you've mentioned that you've played really well when you're kind of happy, go lucky. And then you like that F you mentality. And then there's sort of the Steph Curry, which is somewhere in between. And you get all sorts of different personalities that thrive in different ways. And I think one of one of your biggest strengths is your ability to be the best partner, like to give your partner whatever it is they need. Because watching how you interacted with a Kelly Chang is a little bit different than how you would have interacted with a Julia. And I think that's such a good characteristic to have. Thank you. I think that's one of the most underrated skills in our sport is mm -hmm. being a good teammate and knowing what brings the best out of your partner, like how to communicate what they want when they're in trouble. And we discuss that before a season. I think that's an important part is discussing like an adversity plan when things are bad. What do I want to hear from you? What mm -hmm. do you want to hear from me? And then tailoring it because sometimes I say one thing and then it happens. I'm like, I did not like that. And that wasn't helpful. So that's an important part of like developing a partnership. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have like a list of questions that you'll go through to build a new team? Because you've successfully built new teams in consecutive years. I mean, you mm -hmm. and Kelly were awesome together. And then you and Julia were also awesome together. Do you have like a sit down, run through? You mentioned sort of an adversity plan, how you want to talk to when if Julia's in a rut or if you're in a rut. What other things do you try to figure out? Yeah, I think Peter Habril had a... Um, kind of like a guide of things to talk about as partners. One of them was the values, um, shared values. So what you want to bring, what you want to be like on the court, no matter what the score is, like these are the things I value. That way we can always have something to go back to. Um, yeah, adversity plan. What else? Those are the two main ones, I would say. And when, if you're in a rut, how do you like to be talked to? I like forward talk. So something that's going to help me with the next play. I mm. don't want to talk about the past because that doesn't usually make me better. It makes me overthink. So mm -hmm. I want to be like focused on, um, yeah, what I can do maybe offensively trying something new. And then for me personally, just getting back into the present moment. So I'm not thinking so much and that's like stepping into my box, my serve receive position, feeling toes in my sand feeling yeah the sand in my toes there you go <laughs> and like just dialing into the server's hand yeah i can't believe that uh i'd never done it before but me and avery dross before new orleans we had like 
two days maybe to get ready for it. And so we got out there with Burek and Burek just ran us through this list of questions and he asked us that same thing. If you're in a rut, how do you want Avery to talk to you? And I was like, well, I would want to know what the defense is doing to get me to keep hitting yeah. the wrong swings or shots. Mm -hmm. And Avery was like, oh, I would have never thought of that because I just want you to tell me to side the F out. I was like, <laughs> I would have never said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I never had to, yeah. <laughs> which is good. <laughs> but you and Julia, you had such an awesome year, and I'm curious what it's like because we talked about it earlier. Where I'm always surprised by how young you are, and you were like, "I feel like this old lady out there" because you have young pups like Julia, and then all the way down the line with Kristen and Taryn and all these college talents coming up. What's it like, sort of taking on more of a veteran mentor role? Um, I mean, I always see my partner as an equal, so, but it's different, like feeling more experienced. I think Julia is great and she's always wanting to learn and get better. Um, I've dealt with a lot of the logistics, like the air, like what, what flights we're going to take, mm -hmm. the hotel we're staying at and trying to give more responsibility to Julia so she can learn too. Um, yeah, it's just, it's different. It's unique. Um, yeah, I'm still learning how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Is it fun energy having, because Julia is just like this happy, <laughs> extroverted, high energy person. Is it fun just having someone like that on your team? Oh, it's so fun. She off the court is so energetic and fun to be around and we travel so much. So that's an important part on the court. She's so intense and yeah, I love she's it. She's a killer too. Yeah. yeah. Mm. She's, she can flip that switch too on and off. Yeah. yeah. So we're similar in that way. Um, and we mesh well off the court and that's really important. Yeah. I was going to say more important, but equally important. Yeah. 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 When you're looking for a partner, do you look more and not necessarily more because they're both important, but what stands out to you more? Is it the physical matchup where obviously you would want a blocker, ideally a left sided blocker, or is it, do you look at them from a mental and emotional standpoint and be like, I don't, I think that this could work or I think that couldn't work. Yeah. More of a mental standpoint for me. I, I know Julia at the end of the match, like I don't want to serve her the ball. I played against her a few times mm -hmm. and that's what I love and I respect about her. And I think that takes a lot of mental toughness and it's something we can all get better at. And I think that's far more important than the physical we're all like, I'd say skill wise, similar. It's just the mental game that's going to separate us. Mm -hmm. How do you train your mental game? It's a great question. Um, for one, I think practice, I'm super dialed into one or two things. I think it's so easy to get caught up in chasing so many things because there's always a ton of things to get better at. Mm -hmm. um, so staying locked in at practice on one or two things so I can feel like I'm really getting better at that. Um, Working with sports psychologists, um, I want to get back into that. I think late in the year, we're trying to figure out what a good team um, psychologist would be. So finding that for us will be helpful. John's always great about having us reflect on things, debriefing, and talks about the mental game too. So that's helpful. Yeah. Do you do, do you meditate or do breath work or anything? Not um like as a full practice but before bed i have a routine like okay. when i lay into bed lay in bed i do four seven eight breathing um i'll pray and then visualize i haven't been visualizing lately but when i'm in <laughs> season like i'm doing that every day okay does that if i tried to visualize before <clears throat> bed i feel like that would wake me right back up i'd be getting kind of fired up no i mean sometimes i fall asleep doing it sometimes just yeah. like seeing a couple like seeing myself do what I want to do right, you mm -hmm. know, like seeing myself do it right. Um, it's nothing like super, super intense. Yeah. Cause the, the four, seven, eight, that puts me down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's where, yeah. It relaxes me. Yeah. Do you do that too, Seth? Um, I do like box breathing sometimes mm -hmm. like four, seven, eight, sometimes box breathing. I've been doing some type of like, uh, just in the new year, trying some new things. So doing some like guided sleep things, it's like three to five minutes of just like relaxing your body. It'll take you through like it's on headspace or calm. Those apps are great for it. Um, but yeah, I can't think about all before bed because that'll just make my heart race. Like <laughs> <laughs> if I'm ever like trying to go to sleep and I'm thinking about volleyball, like yeah, it's not, I'm not going to fall asleep. I don't know. It, sometimes I get frustrated. Sometimes I get excited. So yeah. Um, 
yeah, I, I can't do that. But the breathing thing I think is definitely cool and something that I'd like to implement more into the day-to-day stuff. I've been practicing mindfulness at night to like wind down, but I think just to take a pause during the day could help like just normal life as well as volleyball too, like being able to pause mid-match and like not like let the pace of the game like take over kind of thing. So yeah, all things I'm kind of thinking about doing a little bit more of. But, yeah. It's yeah. hard when our life is on the go, like Always, running from yeah. thing to thing. Yeah. I remember coaching at LMU and training and I would just, I'd be going everywhere. And I talked to John and our sports psychologist about like a minute, set your timer for a minute and just breathe. And it was so hard for me to just so sit hard. in the car I'm like, it's been probably 10 seconds and I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard to slow down, especially when we're in a rush. Yeah, 100%. What was I, I'm curious about, Um, because I know you worked with John Merrill and I worked with him a bit um, when I played with M. What were um, some of the biggest, take, like the biggest differences, I guess, between him and April? Or were they pretty similar or were they pretty different in t- terms of coaching style? Yeah, they're different, which I really appreciated. Yeah. Like having... a like just different words, different perspectives, um, different practices. I thought there was benefit to that. And mm. normally I've had just one coach and it's, it was kind of cool to have multiple coaches and learn from them. Um, John has changed his style into more of like an ecological approach. He has a whole podcast on it. <laughs> you can listen there if you're into coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and April loved running practices, how she like practices and yeah. there's a lot of competition, which is great. Yeah. Um, so it was nice to have them both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And John has obviously taught you the dark arts of the float surf. Well, maybe, <laughs> I don't know if you had it before you started working with John, but his float surf was by far the hardest surf I have ever had to pass in my life. <laughs> and you, <laughs> as the annual <laughs> server of the year, you got it dialed. And I'm curious what... What are the cues or like? what are you looking to do with that float? And you can not reveal if you don't want <laughs> yeah. to teach other people the dark arts. I'm not going to re- reveal all my secrets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, there's a lot to it for sure. Like figuring out who your passer is, what they don't like. Um, yeah, just like dialing in the float, making sure it's low across the tape knowing the speed you want to hit it knowing, mm-hmm. depending on where you are yeah there's there's a lot to surfing <laughs> um lot and it's, it's cool yeah, to like yeah. keep getting better at and it's something in practice i've been in f- way too many practices where the first half is like oh just serve some easy serves to initiate right but i think there's missed reps and mis- missed opportunities there and as soon as I'm warm, like I want to hit my best serve and get better at it and dial that in. So I don't really care if you want easy serves. Like I'm going to serve tough when I'm ready. Um, and I think more players can do that to increase their serve. And I don't know why. Why do we want to practice passing yeah, easy as passes? Yeah, a passer, why would you want that? That's, yeah. That hasn't, especially this year, because I've been listening to a lot of Coach Your Brains Out and diving into that side of it more. And the more, because John's very big on making things as game-like as possible. Mm -hmm. And the more you think about it, the more it makes sense of like, why are we trying to get good at passing muffins? Yeah. When we're not going to get served muffins very often. (laughs) It's like even warming up for matches. um, I know some players really like bowls and easy things. And yeah, I like a couple of those to get in a rhythm. But when I step on that court, they're going to attack me. And if I'm not ready, then I'm going to get blown out right away yeah. so it's important to start ready from the warm-up mm-hmm. if you can yeah because i've been getting out with evan a lot and i was like you know i'm pretty much going to try to a new year's resolution is to take bowling 100 percent out of practice because i have never been bowled a ball in my life in a match mm-hmm. never seen it how often do you get a free <laughs> ball once or twice yeah, a match maybe. like maybe <laughs> yeah like it doesn't happen very often Which probably stems from a surf yeah that you're not just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> popping yeah. in. exactly do you serve wilson and mikasa different do you have different cues for that i do when i'm in it i'm a little better with them i feel like um i can't remember right now one of them i feel like i have to jump a little bit more up and down and one i feel like i can jump through it okay um they just move differently they're different yeah yeah sizes and and it's so. hard because if you go from practicing with Mikasa, because it's a little, it's not quite as live where you can, you can hit it 
and put some force behind it, and it's not going to go long. If you hit yeah. that same serve with a Wilson, you're screwed. <laughs> yes. Eight feet long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So different cues for that. Usually more Mikasas. Yeah. I'm playing with more Mikasas. It's easier to go to Wilson other than that part. Yeah. Do you think that, because uh, I have this uh, hypothesis, I guess, is that defense travels a lot more effectively than offense does, where you can go and sometimes your passing might not be as consistent as it was, but defense almost always is there. And that's why Kristen and Taryn, I think, have been so consistently at the top because their defense, no matter if Kristen is hitting 200 or 500, she's still going <laughs> to dig about mm -hmm. 10 balls a set pretty much. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what you think about deserving travel as well. Yeah, I think so. I think it's nice to always have a solid serve to stop the opponent. It's hard because even though you can serve a tough ball, like I'm not in control of the pass, like my yeah. passer is. So it's hard when there's matches where they're passing really well and I'm really reliant on getting them out of system. Yeah. So I've, I've learned to train it in practice too, um, where I'm really focused on defense and maybe not serving as tough so I can work on my defense. Um, yeah, I think that's a, I, I think serving is another underrated skill that people could take more advantage of. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe that would be a situation where you could have the coach bowl into the other team if you're not necessarily concerned about their progress as a team. It's like, all right, <laughs> Betsy, we're taking away your best weapon. You're yeah. going to have to learn how to win without your serve. Yeah. Yep. So John just or April just bowls one in. Yep. And then you got to figure it out. <laughs> I think the most impressive part about your serving is obviously you hit them you know, with pace, but it's it's the fact that you can do that and then you throw in the gnarliest short serve in the entire world and it's just since it's consistent every time. And um I think that's something that people can do more of as well. Like I think a lot of times, me included, like you're like, okay, this is our serving target. We're gonna push them deep or short. Um and you're not as focused on do we want to push them deep to their outside shoulder or deep? Like, do we want to push them to the, the outside, but have it kind of drop? And that's something that like me included, like that needs to be repped out. Like I think more like just serving practices could everyone could benefit from because like, I don't, I don't know if we get enough serving reps when you go live to, to really like be consistent with those serves. Yeah. Do you do like extra just serving practices? Um, Not necessarily. I just, do it in practice. You're just super intentional. Yeah. In yeah. yeah. And doing yeah. just variety and having different serves. Yeah. So you never know where the wind's going to be. You mm -hmm. never know what, what's going to be thrown at you. So you want to be able to do every serve and not serving from the same spot every single yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Have you always had a nasty serve? I feel like it's always been decent, but yeah, I feel like I've learned now that it's a weapon and I'm able <laughs> to like sharpen that tool and it's gotten better. Yeah. I'm um, so my uh, older brother, he's a new volleyball fan and cause he comes out to one tournament every year and he just thinks it's the greatest <laughs> thing, but he's very um, <clears throat> statistically minded. So he's always asking me if I had to pick the most important skill in the sport, what I think it would be. And I go back and forth, but I think a consistently difficult serve would be my number one pick right now. Mm. What would your mm. hierarchy of, most important obviously they're all important <clears throat> yeah probably go with surf and pass um i mean service like you said you want it to be consistent you don't want to make too many errors but i think errors are okay if you're serving tough enough if you're not getting the aces and they're not okay mm -hmm. um A risk reward balance yeah i mean it might depend too but i'd say serve and pass are the top two for yeah. me yeah, Because I think uh, there was this study commission, I don't know how long ago, but they, and I don't know what the methodology was either, but they said that after five, it was in women's indoor, they found that the number one worst thing you could do is miss a serve. <laughs> but the number two thing, two worst thing you could do is hit a serve so easy that it resulted in a perfect pass. Yeah. And the number three worst thing you could do is hit a serve easy enough that it resulted in a good pass. Yeah. <laughs> so the worst thing you can do is in indoor anyway, and I think it probably translates to beaches is be a bad server. Yeah. And as a fan, <laughs> yeah. The serving just seems so easy. Like serve it in. Like right. Chase, my husband, when we <laughs> he first started watching me, he's like, just serve the ball in. Like, I don't understand why you're missing all these serves. And he'll sometimes go back on that. Like, why, why did you not just serve it in there? I'm like, dude, 
<laughs> you get out there. It sounds like my brother. You go play and figure it out. So no, he he respects it a little bit more. But it's it's funny when you first learn or you're a fan, you don't really understand it all. Yeah. Has Chase? Did Chase play volleyball? No, he played basketball at LMU. Okay. So he was a high level athlete. It's mm-hmm. nice to be able to talk to him. He's probably the one person I can talk to after a loss um, who really understands it and gives me space and knows where I'm coming from. Yeah. I feel like it's a good balance of he's a high level athlete, so he's, he can empathize, yeah, but he's not, not a volleyball, volleyball player, so he's gonna try to correct you unless oh, you're yeah. missing serves. Yes. He would be <laughs> he's gonna kill me for saying this. He'd be an excellent commentator. Maybe not for volleyball, definitely not my matches. You wouldn't want to hear what he's saying for my <laughs> matches. Um but he would be a great commentator. He can remember every single play. I'm not so good at that. I have short term memory loss, I think. <laughs> And I forget things, and he'll recall everything after a match, as long as he's not watching Cora, because then it's hard for him to watch. Yeah. It's so interesting how athletes are pretty much like divided clean in two on that, where I'm like Chase, where I can go back and remember a full round of golf I played in high school. Yeah, no. But yeah, Try yeah. can't do that. Can't remember what he did one play ago. Yeah. Try never knows the score. Never he doesn't knows even know the, the score. side switches. Like yeah. He, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's so funny. But. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like film helps me recall things better. So it's nice to do that. But sometimes if there's a long rally and we start talking about something that happened early in the rally, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and I remember Julia did that. I said, I said that to Julia once and I think she thought I was like trying to avoid the conversation. And I was like, I, I like legit do not know what you're talking about. That's so funny. Um, I was like, we're gonna have to go watch it on film later. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that that is i think that can be a great strength that short-term memory it's like the ted lasso be a goldfish (laughs) mantra because i think your ability to bounce back from a loss is pretty much unparalleled where you lost first round of manhattan came back and won which was insane but you did the same thing in austin of 2019 maybe i think see you're recalling something i don't remember so that's where (laughs) that's where my memory is (laughs) His memory's um, so good. Oh my god. Yeah, I I think when I was with Emily Day, we did a good job of like separating matches, which is really helpful. Like even now we'll debrief a match and then we'll say what we want to say and kind of pick a time where we're done talking about it, mm-hmm. unless there's something that's really gonna help us. Um it's like when we're done like when we step out of the shower, like the match is over. We're mm-hmm. on to the next one because we play double elimination, we play pool play into playoffs so we're losing and then we're having having to play again mm-hmm. um and the same mindset when you win a tournament like you're on this high but as soon as you go to that new city like no one really cares yeah. and it's not about what just happened it's about what you're about to do mm-hmm. what did the post loss in manhattan look like oh man <laughs> I mean, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty heartbreaking right away. Uh, I don't think we talked for a little bit. I'm better when we don't talk for 10, 30 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> um, kind of picking a time to talk so we can like emotionally calm down mm. and be more rational. Um, so that was heartbreaking for sure. Um, I just felt like okay, this is our tournament and now it's not. Yeah. And it was great having April in our box and with us. She believed in us the whole time, 100%. She's like, we're going to win this thing. Like day two, Saturday, she wore a Shellback's hat. She's like, I'm channeling <laughs> this win. Like we're going to, we're going to win this. I like, so it's cool to have her confidence. Like, even though we're really bummed and disappointed, we knew we had a lot of work to do. I think it was also disappointing because Julia was already in so much pain with her knees. Yeah. That it was like, oh gosh, More we gotta volleyball. play like yeah. double the amount yeah. of volleyball, and that's really hard to get up and warm up and keep going, even for me who's not hurt. And for her, it was really miserable to warm up. I forgot yeah. how much pain Julia was in. I'm stoked that she is fixing that up. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, even me though too. that'll delay your guys' season, but. I'm happy for Julia and I hope that she's able to play. In yes. Pain. I can't imagine like what she went. Th- I mean, I can a little bit, but for her to be healthy 
she is going to be really tough to stop. Um, yeah, she's just, like one of the most mentally tough people I've ever seen. Yes, ever. Like, yeah, she's pretty impressive. incredible, and a lot of it was selfless because she was thinking about me, and she didn't want to like stop playing volleyball because what would I do? Um, which is crazy to be thinking about that in a moment um, of pain. So she's pretty incredible and I'm grateful for her and what she pushed through this year. And I'm so, so thankful that she can get her knees fixed. She's got one done and I think she's feeling better. So she's on the road to recovery. It's good to hear. And I think uh, as good as it is to have Julia on your team in a moment like that, where I think like Julia, she, she'll puke and rally like she did in Fort Lauderdale. She'll play on a quarter of a knee like she has for the last couple of years. Um, but then I think, like I said, if it's 21-20, I'm drafting Betsy Flint as the person I want serving and playing defense. But I also think if we have a long road to go through a contender's bracket, I think I also want Betsy Flint. So I think she's probably pretty grateful to have a teammate like you where a lot of people, like they, like you said, it went from your tournament to feeling like it's not our tournament. And a lot of people, I think that deflation would let basically make that happen. That would yeah. manifest into a 17th, the 25th, whatever it may be. But um, you just grind. You're a grinder. Yeah. I, I, I love grinding. And I, <laughs> I think it is a short term memory. Like nothing matters but this match, nothing matters but this point. And yeah, just giving it our all. And I also love being an underdog. So then I felt like I was, I was an underdog at that point where no one believes that we're going to come back and do this and we're going to find a way. We found a way. We found a way. <laughs> we did it so in a tropical awesome. storm. Yeah. yeah. And a 7 a.m. match, I think, which I felt like was great for me. I'm a mom and I'm up at like 5 a.m. with Cora. <laughs> so yeah, I was in go. my <laughs> element ready to go. Yeah. yeah. What is the difference... Um, I don't know if you have a different mindset, but uh, playing tournaments when Cora's not there versus when she's there, does that add another like layer of distraction or are you just kind of, you're like, Chase, I'm not worrying about it? You yeah. You deal with her? I think off the court, a little bit of, I mean, healthy distraction. I'm her yeah. mom. I yeah. want to be involved, but Chase is great and he's with her so much that I trust him with her that I don't have to worry about yeah. her. Yeah. I think there's maybe a time where she was crying near the court and I didn't even notice, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. And Chase just tried to get her away. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I could see that could be distracting if I hear that. But I love I love having them there. I know it's hard with the travel and everything. And I mean, Manhattan, you're committing to be there, being there all day, all day. which is yeah. really hard with yeah. the toddler who doesn't want to sit and watch volleyball. Yeah, no. um, yeah, but I love having them when I'm on the road. So then that downtime, I'm spending time with them and not missing them well not just dwelling about a loss or worrying about the next game it's a good disconnect yeah, yeah. that's awesome love that what was the discussion like when you and chase decided to have a kid because obviously you know if, say chase were in the nba he doesn't have to take off when he's pregnant he doesn't have to take yeah. off when he's recovering from pregnancy and he doesn't have to take off because he's breastfeeding a kid it's a lot different conversation when it's a female athlete in particular, I'm curious what what's that decision making process like because it's not a light choice to be made. Yeah, it was challenging for sure. It was COVID at the time, and we had a friend was like, "This isn't going away anytime soon." So we thought maybe we had a break. It was a good time to try, and we're so lucky we got pregnant fairly quick. I know a lot of people struggle with that, um, so that was a factor um, coming back. I did. I mean, I. I had the mission. I wanted to come back and I'm pretty determined. So I knew it was going to happen, but I thought it was going to be like three months. I'd be playing. I don't know why I had this in my head, <laughs> but it's very challenging to come back and be playing at a high level three months postpartum. Um, and maybe not super safe for your body either. So I think I came back around five and a half, six months, which is still just still pretty remarkable. fast. Um, but I felt like I did it the right way. I started slow. Chase was there to hold me back when I, when I wanted to work out early on. Um, and then I had a great pelvic floor physical therapist, which I totally recommend if you ever get pregnant or all the ladies listening out there, it's mm -hmm. so important for our bodies. And I don't think healthcare provides it as well as they should. So I think it's a huge thing that all female athletes um, as moms should have. And I think what Delaney has been going through is that there's just 
it's not that it's not provided for that well it's just there's no information or not no information but it's very little Mm -hmm. yeah when i went for my six-week checkup they're like oh you're cleared you can start working out i'm like so i can start jumping i'm good to go they're like yeah and then i went to my pelvic floor physical therapist and she's like uh i know your goals like this is a muscle it's Mm -hmm. not fully healed you need to learn how to re-engage your core because i you know you lose your core the last half of your pregnancy um so it was great to have her advise me and slow me down a little bit. And I think it was worth it because my body's felt great and I can't complain. That had to have been pretty hard for someone who has trouble sitting for a minute breathing in a car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely it was. And as you know, that's it's hard being a mom. It's hard being a parent and taking care of a kid that doesn't sleep Yeah, and is so dependent on you for all things. So I was a little distracted and I love the, the mental break too, from, uh, like going to work out. Yeah. How was that? Well, your first tournament back was a wild ride. Atlantic yes. city. Was that, was it a tour <clears throat> series or was it like a Navy Pinex goal? It was like a type, next you, goal. Yeah. You want to call it. yeah. Yeah. And you just started five <laughs> matches in a day. Five matches. I think we <laughs> lost our first match to you. Was that our first match? I don't know, first or second. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, draw. yeah. Played like five matches in a day with Emily Day, <laughs> yeah. but it was cool to be back with Emily Day because I played with her before COVID. So before I got pregnant and then to step back on the court with her felt like things hadn't changed. Um, so I didn't have to like worry about too much other than just trying to get my touch back, trying to like feel what it's like to compete again. Mm-hmm. How did it feel to compete again? I mean, it was so fun. <laughs> um, aside from all the elements, the, the hot sand, were and brutal, but, all of that, yeah, but yeah. She's tough. It, it's fun. It's, yeah. I love competing. Five matches in a day is ridiculous. I don't know how people do that all the time. They shouldn't be allowed to play five <laughs> matches in a day. <laughs> um, yeah, I I love those days because most people <laughs> don't. And, <laughs> yeah but then again i couldn't do a pull-up all last year because i started out doing six matches yeah day, so <laughs> yeah i mean we get spoiled when we're just doing two or three matches a day like on the world tour um yeah. and some avps if you're going through the winner's bracket at least it's cruising um so then you get spoiled and you forget what it feels like to play so many in a day yeah. i think the hardest part obviously by your fifth match, your your legs are fuel or cramping, all kinds of stuff. But I think the hardest part is usually there's not enough. There's just enough time in between matches where you get just cool enough where you have to kind of do another warm up again. Again, yeah. that's like I just played in one in um, October, November in New Orleans, and it they it was like a big money whatever, and it was supposed to be a two day thing, but the girls didn't have enough, so they crammed all into one day. So I think we played five matches. Um, and it was just enough time to be like, okay, we just cooled down and now it's like, okay, now we got to warm up again. And I think that's the part that you're just like, oh my yeah. God, like you guys in I Manhattan think, just warming up and warming yeah. up. You're just like, oh my God. I think I'd rather just play back to back. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're warm. <laughs> that it's was like, nice Sunday. They did just a rolling start yeah. because of the tropical storm in yeah. Manhattan beach. So we had to warm up again, but it was a little closer together than maybe a normal yeah. <laughs> yeah. event yeah. would be. Yeah. So what was, uh. Did you have expectations going into that AC? What was the mindset? Was it just excited to play? Oh, man. Now you're making me recall things that are really far away. <laughs> um, was no, that, I was excited. I mean, I was... It would have been... Like, nervous. Yeah, right after yeah. COVID, so 21. Yeah. A little nervous, too, because I know, like, people are like, oh, is Betsy going to be back? Is she going to be able to play at a high level again? So I felt a little bit, like unsure but once you lose those expectations of others and it's about me and my game i was able to get better and when you come back from having a baby there's like big strides you get to make which is cool because i feel like i'm at a point where like i'm working on a lot of little things and you don't always see the progress Mm -hmm. and then from there i was able to see a lot of progress like from month to month uh, physically mentally all the things i didn't think about that yeah where because once you get to the top like in, in golf, for example, you're putting for three hours a day to try to get your average from 71 to 70 and a half. Yeah. And it's really frustrating. Yeah. And then in, in beach, you're practicing for hours a day just to try to make a 21-19, a 21-18. Mm-hmm. Like I look back at the, because uh, Tri is obviously super frustrated at the way the year went. 
So I looked at it and I said, all right, well, you guys won 49% of the available points. And Anders and Christian, the greatest team in the history of the world, who won eight medals in nine events, they won 53%. So you're 4% away from being the greatest team who's ever played. Like it's a pretty small gap. Wow. (laughs) Which is encouraging. Yeah. For sure. And it's very hard. A lot easier said than done. That's crazy. Yeah. It was probably pretty fun for you to make those big jumps though. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you had been at at the top making those small ones and then it's like, oh man. Yeah. Kind of a learner again. It was, yeah, it was really cool. I, I think early on, like the jump isn't fully there, at least for me. And I was just trying to score shooting, which I love shooting anyway, but it's just harder when you're maybe not hitting as high of a point. Mm-hmm. Um, so just getting creative, knowing like, all right, this is what I'm going to deal with right now. And hopefully I keep getting better. And yeah, that was one of the biggest challenges. It was cool to get to the finals of the AVP Manhattan Beach that year. And we played April and Alex, I think, in the finals, and they just won gold in Tokyo. So mm-hmm. it was fun to come back, like being six or seven month postpartum, like, all right, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Like, that it's going to take insane. time, but insane. we're here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh that was gosh. cool. Yeah. Did you have, because right now on the AVP anyway, or this year, um, you were the only mom on the AVP, or Aurora Davis. Aurora, yeah. But at the, at the kind of top level, did you have any people you could talk to because there's i mean there's laura ludwig carrie is obviously a big example agatha now rebecca but as far as domestically it's been pretty few and far between crazy yeah Yeah, but i feel like all the moms have been supportive like there's Mm -hmm. a secret moms club that (laughs) we're all competitors but as soon as you become a mom like they're so inclusive and it's pretty cool so like kim DeCello helped me early on like lauren fendrick was able to talk to me carrie walsh yeah all the moms and it's cool to think back like nicole brana was playing at a high level with two kids yeah for a long time and i don't i didn't realize when i was playing her like how legit that was and how hard (laughs) that must have been um so it's cool to respect those moms who have come before me and hopefully i can keep inspiring more people when they decide to start a family too have people reached out to you because now it seems like it's an avp daycare because april's got a kid (laughs) alex got a kid emily delaney like now all the avp women are having kids are you just being hit up left and right Uh, i mean not that often but i'm here for anyone out there who wants to talk um everyone goes through so many different things so what worked for me probably won't work for everyone but it's encouraging to see people come back and play at a high level after having kids do you have any, um, in retrospect, I mean, not that motherhood's in retrospect, of course, <laughs> about to turn three, but any big pieces of advice or biggest things you learned that you think would be super helpful for women who are athletes who are either about to become moms or thinking about it? I mean, there's a lot. I think every stage of motherhood is different. Um, I do think the biggest one is the pelvic floor physical therapist I talked about as far as like coming back and playing and physically getting back. I think mentally there's just so many more challenges than you'll ever expect and you don't really know until you're in it. Um, yeah, I, I I don't have one piece of advice, but yeah. just have grace for yourself. It's so hard and it's so different and it's also pretty cool. Like in the end, volleyball really doesn't matter. Family does. So it's just good good to think about and have in, in, in my mind all the time. And what a cool example that you set for Cora, I think, that you yeah. were able to make the Manhattan Beach Open <laughs> finals and give April and Alex a good run, what, six, seven months after having a Yeah, kid. I love having, I have a picture of us, like I'm in my swimsuit on the one of the side courts with Cora and Chase, and I think I'll cherish that picture forever. Um, and then every year, just seeing a new picture and how much she's grown and that's a big part of my why is to inspire her to chase her dreams and whatever that will be when she gets older. So I hope she can look back and think it's pretty cool, but it might not be till she's like 20 or 30. (laughs) 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 And there are obviously uh, very obvious drawbacks of having a kid where you have to take pretty much a year and a half off of competing at the level that you want. And then you have to get back to that level. Have you found any advantages or sort of mom superpowers? that have come from I mean, it. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I mean, one, not having sleep and being able to perform at a high level is really challenging. I feel like it gives me a little bit of an edge. I think people show up to practice and they're tired, they're sore. They like woke up once in the night or something and they're complaining. <laughs> and I just like laugh in the back of my head yeah. and have I'm like, you have no idea. No idea. Yeah. Um, so for sure, I like that it gives me a little bit of an edge and mm -hmm. a, more of a challenge than maybe other people have. But I've also learned that everyone's going through things and just to be kind and be gracious, gracious to everyone. Cause it doesn't matter the challenge. Like if I think mine's harder, it doesn't, yours might be just as hard, but mm -hmm. in your own way. So just being more gracious to everyone. Yeah. And speaking of that, you're used to running off very little sleep, wake up at five in the morning, Sunday of Manhattan. You're like, Oh, this is I'm thriving. Time. Time. I'm thriving. <laughs> That's my time. <laughs> 5 a.m. I remember my alarm was in the fours. That was, that was tough. That's always tough. When yeah. you wake up and you look outside and you can't tell if it's midnight, or close to dawn it's like but this when is it's, early but when it's sunday in manhattan you wake up excited that's true so, yeah. yeah yeah how many sundays had you made do you know I don't a couple know. you should know that yeah. travis yeah it's, yeah what did yeah. you do your that's research a travis, travis I'm, I'm falling short here. Yeah. no i don't know i don't know yeah was there when you woke up sunday of manhattan or maybe even did, well did you guys was it your last match that was a forfeit because those matches went late on Saturday. Saturday. It was the Maestrini's. They had yeah. they forfeited mid mid match. Mid match. Yeah. That. And then we had a forfeit right after, which I've never had anyone uh, honestly I've never had a tournament where someone's forfeited yeah. and yeah. to have two in a row was kind of crazy yeah. and very unfortunate for them, but fortunate for Julia's knees. Yeah. Um, so that was like just a little bit of a relief. Like, mm -hmm. okay, like someone's looking out for us <laughs> we can do this yeah yeah but you're do you, do you remember like were, were you in those last matches of the day type no i was okay. hoping we'd play one more on saturday because i felt like there's yeah. some time but i think the men played an extra round and the women started early okay. sunday yeah because they right. i remember they for uh tori and katie forfeited mm -hmm. um before we me and tony played zana and diana on stadium to get to the semis and we lost. We we're kind of waiting around, waiting around. And they're like, "Okay, now we're gonna go tomorrow, seven a.m." So probably the same. It's crazy. Wow. Well, because there's always that sense of accomplishment, or at least for athletes who don't make Sundays very often. I remember when I made my first Sunday, I was like, "This is awesome." I feel like I just won the tournament. And then you wake up and you still have that sense of accomplishment, given the road that you guys went through. When you went to bed Saturday or woke up Sunday, you're like, "Wow." We got back here. It's no, it was more cool. like, yeah. It was like, we're going to do this. Like, we got yeah. here. Now we're here. Now it's showtime. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And is there any greater feeling than winning in no. Manhattan Open? Definitely not. It was pretty cool. That's and awesome. it'll be cool to do the pure ceremony. Mm -hmm. Don't know why they do it a year later, but it's okay. It so just gives Cora you two celebrations. Go, I, that's it true. That's one. true. So it'll be cool for Cora to see my name on the pier yeah. as she gets oh, older. So cute. Yeah. I know for, I mean, for everyone, that's, that's a big thing, but especially for those who grew up in the South Bay. But is that as big a deal for you too? For sure. And I've been playing a while now and it's not happened. Um, the last three AVPs, I was in the finals. And so I was glad the third one we made happen. Yeah, third time's a charm. Yeah. Third charm. Third charm. Just That's needed so to lose awesome. the first round, tropical storm, play with a partner who had one knee. Yep. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> Just a little <laughs> adversity. A little bit. That's the solution. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> we do joke that if we're feeling good, that's not good. We're usually like, <laughs> good things happen when something's happening. Yeah. Like, I think one tournament she had strep throat. Just, I don't know. There's always something. If you don't feel good, that's a good sign. Yeah. Well, because you're both, <laughs> you're both so good at dealing with stuff. And not just dealing with it, but sort of like thriving, turning in it. it into <laughs> motivation or whatever it may be. Because I mean, when you lose, like you've shown a very good ability to come back, not just win the next match, but the next like eight. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a skill. It's a skill. Yeah. What's been your, um, aside from Manhattan, what's been um, one of your favorite memories on tour? tournament wins i guess ever um oh tournament win. i was singing off the court Bo, i, I was actually both. i was talking to m day the other day there was one tournament in poland we had lost i don't know fairly early and at the time she had 
a high school friend that was Jay-Z's stylist and they were in town and we got to go to the Jay-Z Beyonce concert in Poland, <laughs> which was so pretty cool. Awesome. <laughs> and then we were just talking about, our, we had a really crazy Switzerland trip where we got lost on this hike yeah. and it was like a three hour downhill hike, what we thought. And it was an all day thing. And just, those are the memories we make. Like, yeah, the wins and losses, whatever, but yeah. I'm going to take those memories with me. Yeah. Um, so that's so awesome. yeah and it's so often it's the stuff that goes slightly wrong like getting yeah. lost in a hike in switzerland you yep. remember that way more oh, yeah. than you would if you just stayed on a trail somewhere <laughs> yep 100 <laughs> percent. take notes do not read blog posts from like seven years <laughs> ago make sure it's updated <laughs> oh my God. well obviously with julia's knee and your tender toe <laughs> difficult to map out exactly plus we don't really know what the avp looks like um what do you have a vision of what 2024 looks like of what like a tentative start date yeah um i've been hoping to get in the sand in february at some point Teresa and i are gonna train and maybe play in a couple events together until oh, our partners are back because megan's in school um and julia won't be ready for a little bit so that that'll makes be fun my heart really happy yeah, yeah cool. she's great she's a great person we trained together a little bit um when julia was just resting her knees mm -hmm. late last year um and we had a good time and i feel like she's focused and wants to get better and we have similar goals so it'll be fun to just make each other better and then yeah. when we go to our other partners we'll battle each other um yeah i'm Very excited cool. about that yeah. Teresa's is yeah. one of my favorite people in the world so yeah. I'm stoked that she has yeah. someone really good to play with. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have any, are there any sponsors that we can oh, give always, some love to? Always. <laughs> Vea Res Resort and Spa in Newport Beach. You've got to go check them out. We're going there for my sister's bachelorette in a couple weeks. So oh, I'm super nice. excited. Fun. Um, go macro. Left on Friday. Swimsuits, apparel, Edelson PC. Great law firm in Chicago. Where's Left on Friday based out of? Um, they're Vancouver, but they have, um, like the co-founders here in Venice okay. beach. So oh, cool. are they the ones who did your world champs? Yeah. They, they were world sweet. Champs. Yeah. They were great. Yeah. I loved world champs <laughs> that you guys could, uh, you could do your own thing. They gave us a hard time about those tops. Why? Cause they weren't like the racer back that they wanted. They had a hard time seeing the numbers. I don't know. I feel like a lot of teams, like I feel yeah. like Tina, Tina and her partner did that. Man, yeah. You guys look no. great. Yeah, I love <laughs> I love their stuff. Yeah. I fell in love with them authentically, wore them, and then just a dream to come true that they want to sponsor me. So they're awesome. Love That's their great. stuff. Gotta yeah. check them out. Worth the price, good quality. Yeah. And they make fun tops. I yeah. could read the numbers fine. And if you didn't get fine, <laughs> the dark points, then yeah, we're good. It worked out. Yeah. <laughs> worth it. Worth it. <laughs> and where can uh, our listeners, viewers follow you and your journeys with Cora? on instagram at <laughs> betsy flint i'm most active there um you can follow my journey I with motherhood more, and more <laughs> posts of you and chase scaring each other late night or no the <laughs> late, late night arguing about who has to take care of cora that was the best video he ever. was kind of mad i post that i'm like look everyone's loving it <laughs> and relating to it so he maybe didn't consent to that probably should have asked i enjoyed it i got a good laugh <laughs> out of so it i'm glad yeah he's <laughs> pretty funny i should record him more <laughs> <laughs> Some more Chase content. That'll be the New Year's resolution. <laughs> Perfect. Bets, I'm glad we could make this happen. Yeah, thanks for thanks having for me. Thanks for coming it's been on. Great. Yeah, so hope fun. your toe heals up well, and uh, I hope you and Therese have all the success in the world. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Shoots.